Hey everyone, welcome to Inside the Edition. I'm Matt De Silva, Editor-in-Chief of Lacrosse Magazine, joined by our Deputy Editor, Corey McLaughlin. We're coming to you live from the National Lacrosse Hall of Fame. And our May edition drops right here on the eve of Selection Sunday, just stocked with NCAA coverage. And Corey, that starts with our cover guy, Ben Williams of Syracuse, the face-off man they've been looking for for a few years now. Yeah, Ben Williams has really changed things uh, for Syracuse this year. For the last couple seasons, they've really needed a face-off guy and were wondering where one would come from. Turns out he comes out from Minnesota uh, via Holy Cross on a transfer before this season. You know, he's been great for them. He has been their X Factor, really, through the first half of the season. He was, he was the story with Syracuse. And as they get into tournament time, um, when face-offs become really important for these elite teams when they go against each other, uh, I think he's going to show up in a big way down the stretch. And Ben Anchors our uh, May Madness takeover of our traditional scoop section. Uh, where there's plenty of content otherwise with Jordan Wolf's Guide to Philadelphia, which of course will host the uh, NCAA Men's Championship weekend and as well as the uh, nearby Chester PA hosting the women. And then also we've got tailgating tips from our resident grill master, Paul Crone, editor emeritus of Lacrosse Magazine. We continue to look at guys who may have an impact uh, come May. Uh, in a section on short stick D middies, uh, all guts, no glory. Usually, you don't hear about these guys a lot. Um, usually, the guys you know being picked on constantly by opposing teams. But Jack Wilhoss, Jack Neer, Phil Castronova, Ryan Izzo are some of the best players in the country. I mean, they're great athletes that have enormous impacts on their team. The recent rules changes uh, of the last year or two um, have really kind of encouraged a quicker pace and, and fewer substitutions, which has played kind of into the hands of the short stick D midi as far as them playing defense. First of all but being able to create transition offense. And when they do create transition offense, it's usually in a, in a big moment, as you've seen this season with Jack Neer uh, in that double overtime game against Syracuse, Will Haas in the championship last year. So these guys deserved a, a look, and uh, we finally gave it to them. More postseason coverage with a look at the Maryland men, who, believe it or not, it's been 40 years since they've last won an NCAA title. Um, Gary Lambrecht kind of goes through the history of close calls with the Terps over recent years, uh, you know, quotes a bunch of former players and, and coaches, uh, Brian Doherty, the goalie, Xander Ritz, who I think his standout quote was, it was a complete disaster, talking about the 2006 uh, semifinal loss to unseated UMass. So there's been no shortage of close calls for Maryland over the years, and also kind of look at relative to this season, nobody kind of, well, few people kind of expected Maryland to be where they are at right now at the end of the season, kind of in that top five conversation. Um, so you wonder again, is this the year for Maryland? Moving to the women's side, Virginia, a Final Four contender last year. We're looking at their freshman goalie, Rachel Vanderkolk, who is the only goalie on the roster, and that would be a lot of pressure for most people uh, if you don't consider what her past has been. Our women's columnist for Cross Magazine, Kate Hickman, actually coached Rachel in high school, and she was an assistant coach on the Severna Park team when Rachel's twin sister, Tracy, tragically took her own life. Kate really writes from the heart on this one, and uh, we, were, we were happy to have her give her first-person perspective, and, and Rachel really opens up about that experience and how it's really helped her gain more resolve as she's tackled other challenges in life. And speaking of inspiring stories, many of you who might be subscribers to our US, US Lacrosse YouTube channel may have seen the BU series with our US Women's U19 team. There are remarkable stories of perseverance that really we thought translated well to print. Uh, so with some vivid photography and, and some poignant words, we were able to really capture that and bring it to the magazine. And as usual, we have all of our instructional tips. Uh, Covey Stanwick from Boston College gives you pointers on, on how to create offense from X. Matt Striebel's got coaching tips in there from Trilogy Lacrosse. And Scott Rogers kind of shows you how to be active, warming up in, in goal during practice or before games. So that's about it for this month. Obviously, there's a lot there. Uh, get your reading glasses ready or whatever you need. And no, I hate that. <laughs> Follow us online at laxmagazine.com and on social media at Lacrosse Mag. Split dodge is really, I think, the most important dodge for an offensive player. And the reason I feel that way is it's just so hard to cover. A split dodge is considered a north-south or a downhill dodge. And the, the reason people say that is you're square, your shoulders are square, you're looking right.